and thank you for joining us on another Ed Moodle tutorial video. Now, this video is for the teachers, the teachers end of Ed Moodle. And what I want to show you, so we show, already show you how to join a um, creator class. And so what I want to show you how to create some interactive content. So after you create your class, you know, you can post different stuff. And what I really want to zoom in on is for you to create a, a quiz so you can do some little questions for your students and get some feedback and you know everybody loves to do a little multiple choice quiz and so on so first of all let me show you how to make a basic a basic post so you click on your class right and you see start a discussion share whatever so you just say listen yeah testing one two three and it's simple like that you you create a post yeah, and they, they will see it when they log in, they will see they will be notified on the app, right? So as I said, what I want to really show you is how to create a, a little quiz, yeah? You, you're posting whatever work and you want to test their feedback and, and so on. So you click on library to the top and you click on new. Now, let's go straight into it. New quiz, and it says you create your quiz below. After you save your quiz, it will be shown up in the My Quiz folder, right? So we click on Create Quiz. So we can call this quiz Demo for C1 TV, right? The instruction is, please, complete this, let's say ASAP, whatever is your instruction. Now here's your time limit, right? If you want to set a limit for the, the quiz in order for them to, um, a time in which they can work within it here. Yeah? So let's say 20, 20 minutes, because I'm just giving them, let's say five questions. So that's more than enough time. Now what is option here? It says show results to students upon completion. Now, what that option means that when they finish with the quiz, let's say the correct answer was A and they selected C, is going to tell them, hey, you know, A, what, what, what you just use that again? Let me take that from the top. Right. So if the correct answer was A and they choose C, if you have this checked, it's going to say, listen, sorry, C was the wrong answer and it's going to light up um, A in green and their incorrect answer in red or so on. Right now, to tell you personally, I don't like leaving that option on because students, it's so easy for them to communicate. One person could do the quiz and they can say, listen, the question with this is that answer and so on. So I always like to take off this and then like when everybody does the, the quiz and so on, finish, I can put it back on and they can see the correct answer. The second option is lock after due date. So if you set your due date, let's say in the next three days, automatically Edmodo will lock it. Yeah, you can set the date and the time in which you want it to lock up. Yeah, I normally leave it open because different persons join at different time and not everybody may have access at the same time, especially in this COVID-19 situation. What I like to do is select randomized questions. What a randomized question is, okay, so let's say what I set on the quiz for question one, maybe somebody question three, maybe somebody question five, maybe somebody question nine. Yeah, so it's good to kind of confuse them a bit so then everybody would do the individual work, right? Now, so that was quiz details, quiz question. Now, I'm a teacher of information technology, so let me just do some quick IT question. Now, the first type of question you can use um, is multiple choice, and we know multiple choice. I mean, we know multiple choice time. So what does, what does CPU stand for? Depending on which part of the world you call it an acronym. So we might say, listen, what does the acronym CPU means? Yeah, but in green, so we just said, what does CPU stand for? Right? And then if you notice, the first answer is, is deemed to be the correct answer. You don't have to put the correct answer there. If I want it as the third one, yeah, if I want to make it full response, I could just add a response there. So I would I would say, listen, um, let's say. Computer processing unit. That is the incorrect answer. I could come up with the correct answer one time. Central processing unit. So, and then I could just make up some others. Let me see. 
computer um, programming unit. Oh. And I can go now, central programming unit. And of course, you know, Mother Bichon, I always try to come up with some similar answers, but again, you know, one might say the trick is strange, but it's not tricky. If you know the contents, you know the contents, no matter what the other incorrect answers look like. Right, so that was an example of nice and simple how to do a multiple choice. Now, um, you can attach a file to your multiple choice. Yeah? So take, for instance, you can say, listen, um, the picture, the picture, what does this picture this picture is an example of what, and you would have attached a picture. Now, the key thing is don't name the picture. So if you go on the internet and you, let's say I want to put a picture of a webcam, I don't save it as webcam because when it shows up the file name and they see webcam, obviously they will select webcam. So I save it as, let's say, image one, and I attach it there, and they will see, and so I will change my question and say, listen, the attached photo is what? And then I put, okay, webcam, correct answer, and so on. So that, that's there if you want to attach a file or something to support your question. Add new question. It always adds the last type of question. I want to show you the next one. True, false. True, false. Listen, um, so let me see what a, a printer is an example of an input. Hey, hey, what going on? input device now that is so false but of course it, the default response is true so i change that to false and that's how simple a true false type of question is right and again it always adds a last type of question let me show you the next one there's a next one um let me do fill in the blank the brain of the computer is normally referred to as this three letter acronym. Let me see if like an S C O R M I N. Whoa. Hey, I could just never get a spelling of acronym right because I always cheat him with spell check. Yeah. And then now. For you to determine where the, the, the option to add, um the blank to go, yeah, you just do one underscore. So take for instance, if I wanted the underscore between here, I just go, you see that? And it comes between there, right? But I want it after, so I put my underscore after. And then I enter the correct answer, which is CPU, and I enter exactly as it is. Now for filling the blanks, don't try to make, um. Try to get um, use it for for answers that are very specific and not not wide in variety, right? And if you notice, I I said three letter acronym so they don't spell out central processing unit. I want the the acronym, right? Um, so we go on to another question. I want to show you how to do the match matching, yeah. I, I really like the matching one. Eh? So like take for instance, you, you give the little instructions here. So again, you know, IT, I'll use IT. Um, um, I can say match these devices to their use. Yeah. Again, I'm just doing a quick thing to run through. Don't, don't hold me to this thing. Use for getting okay use for in inputting voice in into the computer so we're talking here microphone um let's say use for getting songs from the Computer, we're talking here, uh, speaker, 
used to enter data. We're talking here, keyboard, and of course you can add some more. And what I like about this, you can add some other additional answer to confuse them. Yeah, because if you just have three match, it might be easy. So I can say, listen, mouse, and I can say um, printer. Okay, I can say, let me, let me say DVD. And let me add another response and say, listen, use for getting hard copy from the computer. And that answer would be printer. Right, and so there you have it. So we did an example of a multiple choice, a true and false, a fill in the blank, and a matching, right? So um, let's preview and see how our quiz look to make sure that we did it right before we, we assign it to our class. It's, it's never good to publish stuff and then students saying, oh, so miss. Um, this wasn't right and so on. So you can do a preview and make sure that everything is is nice and and so on. So so watch watch the um watch the question on matching. So you see use for inputting voice into the computer. Oh, we said that was again microphone used for getting songs from the computer and always check your spelling and thing and and so on. Especially you see where you for getting songs for right. That speaker used to enter digitalized keyboard. I'm used for getting hard copy. That's printer. And you see, I'm left back with two answer no. So, you know, that makes it nice and challenging, right? What does this, what does CPU stand for? We said that was central processing unit. So I'm testing out that my, 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 my quiz here. The brain of the computer is normally referred to, normally referred to as a, this, as this three letter acronym. I think that was CPU. Um, an example of the true and false one. Now, a printer is an example of a printer is an example of an input device that's false, and so on, right? So I can exit the preview. I'm looking well. I'm looking well, right? Um, so let's let's see now. Um, we need to last saved. So I think it's saved there already. And we can click on close. And remember I said the quiz will go to my quiz. So when I go to my quiz, you see I have it here. Demo for E1 TV. Now, so after I create my quiz, I preview, I find it's good. I can give the class, no, no watch this drop down arrow, it says assign. Yeah? And it says send to. And I have a list of my class here. So I will give one B1 this. And it said due on, I set a date. So let's say it's due on the first, April, January, March, April, May. First of May. And it, I can even put a time now. It says, listen this, pure results to students upon completion, no. Remember what we talked about this? Lock after due date. We're going to leave it open. But we go choose randomized question. Um, randomized question. And what you see here, options, add to gradebook. So when they complete it, it will be marked and created, um, and it goes to a gradebook for itself. So then I know assign it. Click by clicking on assign. All right, so my internet connection in, you know. Yeah, sure, I'll click on it, right? Did I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, a lot of people, remember a lot of people home in this COVID-19 situation, so I guess the internet might move on. So I sure click on assign, did I? Yeah, yeah. So um, when you click on assign there, a confirmation window will come up eventually, <laughs> right? Great. So it says successfully assigned. The quiz is now available for students to take in the class. If your students are taking the quiz using Edmodo mobile app, make sure they use the, the update app, right? 
Yeah. So it tells you a little summary of, of thing, 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 the quizzes, demo, assigned or whatever that you did. I got it. Right. And yeah, that was that. Now, last thing, last thing. So after you assign your quiz, as the students do the quiz, you can get a progress. Now, obviously, I just posted this, so most students wouldn't have done that, but I'm going to use another quiz that I would have posted. Um, hmm, Lord, on there. If 3G1 people see their bad mark, let me, let me um, go to 1G. Ah, ah, ah. Right? And you see here, I can see the results of what they would have they would have done right so it tells me the students and yeah and how much you got out of the total and the percentage this is this is nice no marking and 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 no no paper to correct if you want a summary of of the the quiz you can view the quiz there and it can and give you a breakdown of who did it who did it um the questions that was most difficult and so on yeah a nice um it gives you a nice what you call it and a nice anal analysis of um of the quiz yeah as i said the internet is yeah so you see the average score is 66 percent the highest score somebody actually got 100 percent well done yeah it gives you a little graphic here correct Partial, <laughs> correct, incorrect. Um, that what this means here. Um, you can also um, now I assigned it to more than one class, so that way I have the option of going to the different class. So what you saw, when I click on the student tab, it shows me that it was graded and the, the actual score. Now when you see a zero, it means that the child might have had difficulty or um, would have opened the quiz and the quiz and then realize they open it and they run out. So in a case like this, yeah, you just come and you click on delete quiz submission and that student will get the the opportunity to do it over again. Because once you see as you're most likely it's some difficulty and if you check the message, you might see they would have messaged you and say, well, hey, so I didn't get you, right? Yeah, and you know, it tells you those who did it late you see that because remember i had a due date so it tells me hey these well our school is boys these boys submitted did they work late and it tells me the time and so on and another good feature they have it it also tells me like if a student was was doing the quiz now it will tell me um in progress the exam is in progress and you see these students here they did not view the quiz up to now yeah in our school we call them slack so that is that is it on creating a quiz so we we looked at multiple choice matching fill in the blanks and what can i remember the next one so thank you for watching make sure to subscribe that and share with your other colleagues so we can master this situation and make use of edmodo i always want to thank the creators of edmodo for creating such a lovely platform and having it for free until next time again make sure to subscribe